When it comes to people in media, who are the most prominent figures that we see? There is Bill Nye the Science Guy, Carl Sagan with Cosmos, Stephen Hawking, a renowned physicist, and Neil deGrasse Tyson, an astrophysicist. But where are the women? Space. Is it really the final frontier? Or are there frontiers closer to home still left to be explored? Hi, I'm Gates McFadden, better known to some of you as Dr. Beverly Crusher on the Starship Enterprise. In my role as Chief Medical Officer on Star Trek The Next Generation, I represent not only the future of medicine, but also equal opportunity for women in the field of biomedical science. You see women here and there occasionally, but really it's dominated by men. Well, now and you're starting to stump me. <laughs> um, I see a lot of guys, so I think... Uh, I could be missing someone, but no one's like jumping out at me at the moment. I really don't believe that I could actually name one, even one woman that I can say that's in media, that is in the STEM field, that's in media. Um, mainly in, you know, you see a lot more females as doctors or forensic scientists. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think just programs like Discover Channel and Nova have a lot more female scientists um, when they do documentaries and stuff than right. when I was a kid. So I think it's improving, but it certainly has a long way to go. Like the people in media who do science, you don't see women. Um, and especially you don't see women of color. Um, of course you see the men, I think, I think men are very much more prominent in the media who do science. You have like Steve Spangler who, you know, does science, but very rarely do you ever see women. You don't even see women on billboards. But women are in the STEM fields. They perform science, build technology, are engineers, and mathematicians. And there are actually famous women that love science. Actress Hedy Lamarr, invented a frequency hopping communication spectrum, which was pivotal for the later development of Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Actress Lisa Kudrow has a bachelor's degree in biology where she studied behavioral neuroscience just like her father. Dr. Mayim Bilek, also known as Amy Farrah Fowler on the Big Bang Theory, has a PhD in neuroscience. Actress Natalie Portman went to Harvard and got her bachelor's degree and published two scientific papers and was an Intel Science Talent Search semifinalist. And Danica McKellar has a degree in mathematics and is a best-selling author of four books that encourage young girls to pursue math and science. And we should all know about Madame Curie, who was the first woman to win the Nobel Prize in physics on her work in radiation. Many women from our past have contributed to the scientific community as well as women today. I'm a thermal engineer at SSL, which means that I make sure that the temperatures on our satellites stay at the appropriate uh, operating temperature. Everything, ha everything on the satellite wants to be at a specific temperature or it might not work if it's out of that range. So we do analysis on the design and iterate with the designers to make sure that uh, we're keeping the satellite happy that it's working uh, at its optimal temperatures. Okay, I'm an associate professor of biology I'm here at Cal State East Bay, and um, I have a combination of things that I have to do. I have to, to teach a variety of classes, and I teach more in that area of ecology and animal behavior and so on. I also uh, am expected to conduct research or to engage in professional activity and then also uh, do university and community service. I'm Stephanie Couch, the Bear Executive Director of the Institute for STEM Education and I also direct the Gateways East Bay STEM Network. They're separate but very complementary roles. My name is Marlena Jackson and I am a research associate at the world's leading biotech organizations. Um, my name is Donna Gladuke. I'm an associate professor of chemistry and biochemistry here at Cal State East Bay and I teach chemistry classes, do research, and work on STEM education projects. Well, there's no doubt that until you can see yourself potentially in these fields, um, it's, it's really hard to think of going down that path. And so I think if 
there were better representation, more girls, young girls, um, would see themselves potentially in those kinds of roles. I think we have to continue to just bring awareness and there has to be, continue to be more women who are at the forefront making sure that that happens. Number one, we need to get more of us out there where we're just already just serving as uh, a role model in a sense where you know young girls can say hey well you know she's doing that and I like her or I would like to be like her or she seems like she's living a life that I'd like to to you know live too so hey I can be one of those too. So I would and say that a lot of girls in middle school and high school tend to not feel very empowered and to advocate themselves uh, advocate for themselves or actively seek out these kind of programs and so I would encourage them to talk to their parents, talk to their teachers who might know of these opportunities and get themselves connected and give it a try. Showing them that women, that it's not really a men's field. Showing them that engineering can also have girls and they can be interested in fashion and they can wear heels too. <laughs> and women who actually go into the STEM field make about 33% more than their counterparts who do not major in STEM uh, related fields. So I think the future is gonna get brighter, the future is gonna get bigger, and then when we have that di the more of that diversity in the STEM field, I think it's going to open up doors for women, and I think if we can only make forward progress, I don't think that we're gonna go behind. But I think one of the, one of the, the most, I think, heart-wrenching things is that we're still, although women are about 24% of the STEM workforce, I think women of color are about 3% of that workforce, and I think that's a really sad statistic, and that's what really needs to be changed. How do we inspire more women of color to pursue careers in STEM, and how do we make sure that they don't drop out and feel like they're being supported um, once they do? And very often, they're, they are the only ones that look like them in these fields. And there's no question that the media and entertainment have a significant impact. There are groups out here that helps young girls. We have Black Girls Code, a nonprofit that teaches girls about coding. There is Next Gene Girls, another nonprofit that teaches girls about science. And even a popular Facebook page with over 10 million likes is about science and was started by a British woman named Elise Andrews. The truth about women in science is that women are already in science. It is about time the media catches up.